What's up guys, it's Pliskin here. Now normally when I see something in video games that makes me go, hmm, that's not how it works in reality, I make a video called Virtuality versus Reality. However, I have a lot of smaller nitpicky ideas that wouldn't fit into one of those big videos. So with that in mind, today we have 10 lies video games tell you about guns. Let's get right on into it. Number 10. The gun you're using dictates the damage you deal. Now you see this happen quite a bit in video games where a certain weapon category, let's take assault rifles for example, will have varying different options for you to choose from, each one of them differing with range and damage capabilities. The thing is, the damage capabilities don't often reflect how these things work in real life. The Call of Duty franchise and Far Cry are both notorious for this one here. You see, in reality, it doesn't matter what gun necessarily I'm using, what matters is the bullet that it's firing. So whether I'm using the FAMAS in Far Cry 4 or the P416, it shouldn't really differ the amount of damage or the amount of times I need to shoot a guy before he goes down. What should matter is the fact that there are both rifles firing the 556 cartridge. So they should perform very similarly. So next time you're playing Black Ops and you choose the AUG over the Commando for a damage boost, just know it's a load of bullshit. Coming in at number 9, we have the idea that shotguns suck. Now, I've actually made an entire video about this before, explaining my frustrations with this inaccuracy. However, I still feel like it deserves a mention here, just in case you haven't seen it. Now, I know for all of you guys that play Call of Duty especially, you're gonna like think of shotguns as just this weak shit thing that's only useful at like farting distances. When in reality, the shotgun doesn't work that way. Shotguns tend to have the same range as pistols do, and if you load in slug rounds, you can get even further ranges. Shotguns actually happen to be one of the most effective tools at taking down a human-sized target with the least amount of shots fired. I really wish more mainstream games would correct this like fallacy because it's really annoying to pick up a game, get excited to get my hands on a shotgun, and then find out that it turns out to be rubbish. Coming in at number 8, we got the whole myth and idea that bolt actions are somehow just stronger by default than their semi-automatic counterparts. Now I'm honestly not too pissed off about this one because it makes sense for balancing. In a video game type scenario, there are very little ways to balance your weapons that make sense when compared to reality. So when you have a whole bunch of snipers in a sandbox, there isn't a lot of incentive to use a bolt action over a semi-automatic weapon. So developers usually say, okay, you're gonna be a lot slower, the game might not be geared towards like long, patient, waiting sniping, so we're just gonna make this a really powerful headshot weapon. I get it, but at the same time, it, it helps propagate a myth and I mean, that's why I'm making this video, to correct that. Again, damage is dependent on the bullet. Whether a rifle is bolt action or semi-automatic, the damage will not differ. Number 7. Guns last forever and are indestructible. Again, I'm not going to be too harsh with this one, because when you pick up a video game, or when you're designing a video game, specifically a shooter, you want to make the shooting feel good. And if you had to clear jams every five seconds because you haven't been cleaning your rifle, or you've put it through the shitter and it's not made for that, you wouldn't necessarily be having fun. That's not to say that certain games haven't tried that. For example, Far Cry 2 has a jamming mechanic and a weapon degradation mechanic. I find it really cool, but some people get really pissed off by it. But yeah, rifles, pistols, shotguns, snipers, whatever it is, it's a physical object. All physical objects wear away with the slow passage of time. And if you want your gun to run reliably, you gotta put some effort into greasing it up, taking care of it, replacing parts, all that stuff that wouldn't be fun in a video game. Number six, the idea that you can be completely accurate, laser pinpoint accurate, mind you, with fully automatic fire. Most weapons that you would be using on a battlefield, for defense, or in a serious scenario, have recoil. Some recoil is harsher than others, it depends on the bullet, it depends on the actual gun. However, if there's one thing that's for certain, is that when you're firing a fully automatic fire, you're not doing so to expect pinpoint accuracy. 
when you're firing in full auto, it's not so much like, oh, I'm going for the headshot. It's I'm going for everything around this guy and this guy himself. So if we're looking at the situation right now in Far Cry 4, where I have the bees on, there's a bunch of guys by these trucks. I'm not so much aiming at the specific point of their body that I want to hit. I'm just saying everything generally around him will have bullets flying at him. Now in the game, of course, you can see everything is like laser accurate. Real life, not so much. Full auto has its uses, again, at closer ranges or when you don't have the time to aim. However, if you want to stay accurate, you're better off switching your gun to semi-automatic fire and going from there. Number five, and this is a belief that really gets on my nerves, the idea that pistols are easier to handle than rifle. Now, for someone who doesn't understand guns, I kind of understand where this is coming from. You see a pistol, you think of it as, okay, it's smaller, therefore it must be easier to handle than something that's larger and longer like a rifle. However, the reality is, even though rifles tend to fire rounds larger than pistols, they're more ergonomically pleasing to the body. You can get a much firmer grip with both hands. It's much easier to move around faster, handle the recoil, and stay accurate. Whereas with a pistol, you don't really have the mass that a rifle has. You don't really have the grip space that a rifle has. So it takes a lot more training to more so effectively use a pistol than it would a rifle. Number four, the idea that suppressors are magic, you slap one onto your gun, and no matter what it is, it becomes completely silent. Similarly to when we were talking about damage earlier before, the way a suppressor will work with a gun is kind of dependent on the gun, but it is more so dependent on the bullet that you are firing. Now, you can suppress something and make it quiet enough to the point where if you're in a rainstorm, for example, outside on a very loud boat, people might not hear you when you're firing the gun off. However, if you take something that isn't strictly modified or optimized for silence and silence first, and you just slap a suppressor onto whatever gun you find, it's going to be easier on your hearing and less likely to blind you in darker spaces. However, it is not going to be as quiet as it is in video games, in movies. It's still going to be pretty freaking loud. If you're interested in hearing more about the realities and intricacies of suppressors and what guns work well with them, whereas what guns don't, leave a like on this video and let me know down in the comments below because I just might make a virtuality versus reality on suppressors. All right, now this is one that I fell for for a very long time as a kid before I decided to get into guns. The idea that the M14 is this god tier miracle gun suited for any situation. Now I mainly blame this one on COD, but it's also present in both Far Cry and Metal Gear. The idea that the M14 is this super accurate, super high damage and super sneaky like tool. For example, if you're playing Modern Warfare 2, every time you have one of those like snowy stealth situations, it gives you a suppressed M14. Newsflash, the M14 fires the 308 round. That does not suppress well. Even with a suppressor, it's going to be loud as shit. The accuracy, yeah, that's true. However, there are a lot of detriments to the M14 that make it far from god tier. First off, the recoil is insane. Second off, the gun is pretty heavy and as soon as you start putting attachments on it, it gets even worse. Third off, the gun was completely outdated by the time it was invented. Now, the M14 kind of has a dark story. During the early days of Vietnam, the US military still used the M14, being incredibly stubborn not wanting to deviate from their M1 Garand designs. They stubbornly insisted that this battle rifle was somehow well suited for tight knit jungle scenarios, jungle combat in which the enemy normally popped up not too far away from you. Trying to fire this thing in fully automatic meant no shots landed, the round was too big, the rifle was too bulky, and a lot of guys died because they were going up against enemies with the far superior AK-47. 
Eventually, the M14 was replaced by the AR-15, later adopted as the M16, which proved very quickly to be a superior rifle. So the M14, I mean, yes, it's an accurate gun, and if you're just sitting at a range, plinking targets from really far away, it's probably something good to use. But for a real life application, the M14 is limited at best, and it is nowhere near the god tier gun that video games show it to be. Number two, the 50 BMG was not meant for sniping. Now, now, before you guys who play Call of Duty run off, get pissed off, and unsubscribe or dislike this video, hear me out. The 50 BMG round was designed to be an anti material round. This means something that's designed for completely destroying an object, something that's material. As such, the 50 BMG excels for taking out vehicles or hitting opponents that are hiding behind strong cover. This is kind of a boundary breaker round. It is a tank buster. It is a Humvee buster. It's just what you want to shoot at something that's larger than a human sized target. It's not as accurate as a lot of other sniper rounds. So sniping in the traditional sense with the idea that I am planted here and I'm trying to hit this one thing very far away is not what the 50 BMG was designed for. In fact, it's quite the opposite. The 50 BMG was for taking out targets at a safe distance, mind you, but not at necessarily a sniping distance. For proper sniping, you'd want to use a 308, 300 Winchester Magnum or 6.5 Grendel for more accurate shots. The 50 BMG is a little more of a niche thing. And now for the biggest gun myth in all of gaming, and I might be cheating a little bit with this one, but it's the idea that bows are the pinnacle of stealth. Now don't get me wrong, a skilled bowman is going to be a lot quieter than most, if not all, suppressed firearms. However, the idea that you're just going to be sitting there, hiding in a bush, aiming at a guy, releasing an arrow, taking him out in one shot like the Far Cry fantasy, is not really probable. You see, when you hit someone with a bow and arrow, if you hit them in the right spot, of course, it's going to take them down immediately. However, if you just generally hit them center mass, it's going to be less of this and more of this. So yeah, I'm sorry to break your Far Cry fantasy bubble, but if you really want to take a guy out completely silently without him screaming or alerting his friends, you best use a knife. But yeah, that's pretty much it for me. I hope you guys learned something new today and I helped break some of these myths. Again, if you want to see a full video talking about the science and logic behind suppressors and how they actually work, go ahead and let me know down below. Anyways, hope you guys enjoyed. This has been Pliskin. Over and out.